In the year 1258, Princess Christina of Norway married Philip of Castile, a younger brother of King Alfonso X of Castile. But how did this strange match come about? And did the union lead to the princess's death? Some claim she was poisoned, but others say she died from a broken heart. Join me as we explore her story. Despite there being no clear record for her birth, Christina of Norway is believed to have been born in the year 1234 in the Norwegian port city of Bergen, which was the capital of the Kingdom of Norway and one of the most important trading centres in Europe during the High Middle Ages. Christina's father was King Hakon IV Hakonson of Norway, who ruled the Scandinavian Kingdom since 1217, and her mother was the Queen Consort Margaret Skulesdatter. Christina was the third of her parents' four children, and she also had two half-brothers from her father. At the time Christina was born in the mid-1230s, her father was embroiled in a civil war with a claimant to the throne, Sigurd Ribbung. This had divided the Norwegian nobility and lasted for many years, only finally coming to an end in 1240, when Hakon unmistakably established himself as the King of Norway. Given all of this, Christina's earliest years were lived against the backdrop of war and instability within the royal family, yet thereafter, the medieval Kingdom of Norway reached the peak of its powers under Hakon, who established himself as the preeminent ruler of the North Sea, with the Kingdom of Norway stretching far to the west to exercise control over the regions such as the Hebrides and Orkney Islands in Scotland, the Faroe Islands, and the Norse colony of Iceland. As a result, Hakon was courted by many of Europe's greatest powers as a possible ally, even being offered the high kinship of Ireland in the 1250s. As we will see, Hakon's position of political and military strength would shape Christina's life in very significant ways. As a member of the Norwegian royal family, Christina would have grown up in Bergen at a highly developed court. Here, many aspects of traditional Norse society were retained, with traditional Viking longhouses still being built but these were great in size by the 13th century and were staffed by a small army of officials and attendants at what was one of the most powerful royal courts in Europe at the time. Norway was also wealthy by this time, on the back of extensive trade across the North Atlantic and Baltic Sea, and Christina would have grown up in an affluent fashion by the standards of that time. There are virtually no administrative records or correspondence that have survived today to shed light on the events of Christina's life, and this has led to many tales and legends, but we do have several Norse sagas which give us some details on her, though these are admittedly limited. These Norse sagas would reach their peak in the 13th century, and were generally written anonymously by Icelandic scholars who were concerned with the affairs of the Norse world. As such, there are snippets of information which relate to Christina's life, found through several of them. The main saga which relates to the details concerning Christina is the Hakonar saga, or the saga of Hakon Hakonarson, an old Norse epic saga which was written during the mid 1260s by an Icelandic historian by the name Sturla Pordason. Pordason composed the epic in 1264 or 1265 while residing at the court of Magnus Lagerbote, Christina's brother and the son and successor of King Hakon IV. The saga is effectively a celebration of Hakon's reign, consequently, it contains extensive details of the politics of the 1250s and is our chief source for Christina's marriage and the diplomatic background surrounding it. By the 1250s, as Christina entered her teenage years, Many of Europe's most powerful kingdoms were seeking an alliance with King Hakon of Norway, whose fleet was the most powerful in the North Atlantic at the time. One such suitor was King Alfonso X of Castile, also known as Alfonso the Wise. He was the ruler of one of the several Christian kingdoms which had emerged on the Iberian Peninsula as part of the Reconquest, a series of campaigns by Christian states to recapture the territory from the Moors. Alfonso controlled much of northern, western and central Spain, 
but Castile had made few advances on the moors of Granada in the south for decades, in part because the emigrade of Granada was constantly reinforced by the Muslims of North Africa. To break the stalemate, Alfonso determined to lead a crusade to Africa from Iberia, but in order to undertake this initiative, he needed a fleet to convey his troops to North Africa. Hakon's fleet was an obvious candidate for such a task. In Norway, Hakon was also eager for a Castilian alliance, because it would guarantee a supply of grain and other foodstuffs into his kingdom from the Mediterranean. Thus, legend has it that in the early 1250s, as Christina entered her early 20s, her father arranged for her to marry King Alfonso, but there was an issue. King Alfonso was already married. He had wed Violante of Aragon in 1249, yet, despite several years having passed, she had produced no children, and it was feared that she was barren. By now, Alfonso was fed up, and he planned to annul the marriage. Christina, he hoped, would not only give him heirs, but was very beautiful. She had pale skin, long golden hair, blue eyes, and was tall. This would be a great match for Christina, and a useful alliance for Hakon, as once his daughter was married, she would become Queen of Castile, and there was even a possibility of her gaining the position of Empress, as Alfonso was also a candidate to become the Holy Roman Emperor. Thus, in the early summer of 1257, Christina left her homeland with a retinue of approximately a hundred followers to set sail for the warm Mediterranean. The expedition crossed to Yarmouth in England, before crossing the English Channel, and then proceeding overland from Normandy, all the way south through France to Catalonia. Finally, in the winter of 1257, they crossed through the lands of the Kingdom of Aragon, and finally entered Castile, arriving in Valladolid in early January 1258. The saga of Hakon Hakonarsan tells us of the voyage. The princess enjoyed the journey, the more so the further south they got. When they reached the town of Girona, and when the count who ruled there heard of the maiden's arrival, he rode 50 miles to meet her, bringing with him the bishop and 300 men. When they reached the town, the count took the princess's horse by the bridle and escorted her into the town, and he and the bishop walked beside her all the way to her quarters. That's how much honour they showed her wherever she went. Nevertheless, in the end her long voyage was in vain. Once she arrived to Castile, Christina learned that King Alfonso no longer had any intention of marrying her. His wife had now produced an heir after years of infertile marriage, and was not going to repudiate her. One tale claims that James I, King of Aragon, and known as James the Conqueror, soon learnt of this, and sent Christina a message, asking for her hand in marriage. He had met the princess in late 1257, while on her journey to Castile, and was blown away by her beauty. His wife, Violante of Hungary, had died a few years prior, and he was looking for a new bride. Yet he was an older man, aged about 50, and Christina's father had no interest in forging an alliance with the Kingdom of Aragon, so they politely declined his request. This put King Alfonso in a difficult situation, as he didn't know what to do with the young beautiful princess, so he decided that she should choose her own husband from amongst his four brothers. The first brother was an attractive and accomplished man, but he was married, though he was estranged from his wife and had no problems in leaving her. Christina rejected him immediately, not wanting anything to do with another married man. The second brother was noted to be attractive, intelligent, and a great warrior, but he was far away from Castile, and so Christina also rejected this match. Finally, she was introduced to the two younger brothers, and in the end she chose Philip. Yet this colourful tale about Christina being betrothed to the king only to be rejected, and having to choose between his brothers may be untrue. Well, by 1258, King Alfonso and his wife already had three children, the first, having been born in 1253, 
and four years before Christina set sail to Spain. Some theories suggest the princess was lied to, being told that she would marry King Alfonso. Of course, this was the match that Hakon had originally sought for his daughter, but after Alfonso's wife gave birth after nearly five years of marriage, he could no longer annul his union as he had previously considered. Thus, King Alfonso offered his brother, Infante Philip of Castile in his place, and after nearly two years of extensive diplomatic missions between the kingdoms to negotiate the terms of the marriage, Christina set off. In any case, Christina married her new husband on the 31st of March in 1258, in the church of Santa Maria la Mayor, on the site of the Cathedral of Valladolid today. Philip was an unusual choice as husband. Born in 1231, he had been raised by his father, King Ferdinand III, to become a senior figure within the Spanish church, but despite being made the Archbishop of Seville in the early 1250s, when his father died in 1252, he renounced religious life, so he was free to marry Christina some years later. While most of the hundred strong party which accompanied Christina to Spain from Norway would soon depart for Scandinavia again, many of these were close companions of the princess, and other officials who were ultimately destined to live with her in Castile, as part of her household staff. Hence, while she found herself living in an alien land, there were still some familiar faces. The newlyweds were granted extensive estates and income from King Alfonso, notably in the Seville region, where Philip had previously been the Archbishop. However, Christina would not enjoy this wealth and position for very long. As time passed, Christina began to feel more and more uneasy in Seville, and was likely depressed. She missed her country and her people, and she couldn't stand the heat or the members of the royal court. It's said that this, as well as the fact that she would no longer become Queen of Castile, caused her incredible sadness, and her health began to deteriorate. Eventually, she died in 1262 at 28 years of age. Her death is believed to have occurred in the city of Seville, but as with so much else concerning Christina's life, the details are not entirely clear. She and Philip had not had any children, so there was no quasi-Norwegian branch of the Castilian royal family established. One legend surrounding Christina claims that King Alfonso soon fell in love with her and that they began a secret relationship. Because of this, he made her reject the King of Aragon's marriage request, as he couldn't stand losing her. It's said that the Queen Consort soon learnt of this forbidden liaison, and grew jealous and furious at her husband's love for another woman. As a result, she ordered Christina's assassination, and she was subsequently poisoned, though this is mere speculation. More likely is that she died from illness, though we can't be sure. In the end, Alfonso X did not call on extensive aid from his Norwegian ally, Hakon IV, but he did end up launching several minor crusade-like missions to what is now Morocco, and his reign saw Castile making extensive conquests in southern Spain, particularly around Cadiz. Much of this was achieved with the financial ammunition he had been provided by Hakon as part of Christina's dowry when she married Philip. Legend holds that shortly before her death, Christina requested that a church be built in Castile to St. Olaf, so that she could be interred here. St. Olaf, or Olaf II Haraldsson, was a king of Norway between the years 1015 and 1028, and a distant relative of Christina's. After his death, he was canonised, owing to his work in converting the pagan Norwegians to Christianity. Olaf became the national saint of Norway over time, but Christina's wish for a church in honour of the saint to be established in Castile was not granted. Instead, she was buried in a church in the town of Covarrubias. It is not known if Philip mourned the death of his beautiful wife, but in any case, he was quick to remarry. In 1952, some craftsmen who were carrying out repairs to the church of Covarrubias opened Christina's ornate sarcophagus. When it was uncovered, the individuals involved found, quote, a partially mummified skeleton 
with the length of 1.72 meters, skull is small, and the teeth are well preserved, with no evidence of cavities. Everything points to the skeleton of a woman of high stature, young and strong. This would all match with Christina's death at an early age. At the time, the church authorities had lost track of whom the coffin had been placed there for, but a church record from 1757 soon uncovered that it was Christina. It was also revealed from extensive archaeological and historical investigations that Christina had desired for a church in honour of St Olaf to be erected on the site of her burial. Consequently, in the early 21st century, the authorities in Kovarubias, in conjunction with the governments of Iceland and Norway, provided funding for the construction of a small church in the town to honour the Norwegian saint. Christina was subsequently reinterred there when the church was consecrated in 2011. Thus, fulfilling the dying wish of this particular Norwegian princess, who ended up marrying far from home in the 13th century. This has been Ollie from History Profiles, and I hope you enjoyed the video. It has been an honour to speak on the channel of Forgotten Lives. Hey everyone, Forgotten Lives here. I want to give a big thanks to History Profiles for narrating this video, and if you enjoyed, please be sure to check out his channel. He's got some of the best content on Viking history here on YouTube. As always, if you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments, and I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.